A mission to Mars. It's been a hope, an ambition, a dream for many space programmes around the world. But we expect to hear very soon from the United Arab Emirates that its probe, known as Hope, has reached the orbit of the Red Planet. Well, it would make the UAE the fifth country to reach Mars orbit after the US, the Soviet Union, Europe and India. So it must be a very exciting time for the woman heading the effort. Well, that is Her Excellency Sarah Al-Amiri, and I'm very pleased to say she joins me now, not quite from Mars, but from Dubai. Sarah, very good morning to you. What's the very latest? Test, please. Good morning, Ian. Uh, but currently, the team is uh, observing the spacecraft. The spacecraft looks very good, exactly where we want it to be to start its operation to get into orbit around Mars. We're a few hours away from this orbit, from this sequence starting. We will turn on our thrusters for the longest time we've ever turned it on. Uh, this is a purpose-built mission, and therefore, we will go into orbit by burning half of the fuel, and that will take about 27 minutes of of using our thrusters as a braking system to significantly reduce our speed from about 121,000 kilometers an hour relative to Mars, all the way down to 18,000 kilometers an, an hour. And we start entering orbit um, at an altitude of about 2,300 kilometers from the surface of Mars. That all is the 27 minutes where we have absolutely no control over the spacecraft. And we hope to come on the other side of this on orbit around Mars, being the fifth nation that gets to Mars and hopefully starting our scientific mission. It is very exciting, isn't it? I mean, fewer than half of the spacecraft ever sent to Mars have made it. I mean, have you ever had any doubts in your mind that you could achieve this? So this has been a severely rehearsed and tested to the brink of the, our capabilities to test se uh, the sequence. Uh, we are comfortable with the level of operation of the spacecraft. We've been operating it for about six months now, well over six months, actually. We're comfortable with our understanding of how the spacecraft responds to space. Um, and it's with this that we enter into this final phase and probably the most difficult phase of this mission uh, prior to starting the science of the mission. Um, but as comfortable as you can get, at the end of the day, the odds are the odds. 50% of these missions are able to get into orbit. This is the first time that we use this system. And we're just, we're just looking forward to um, being at the other side of, of this anticipation. Uh, it's been a true challenge, but it's been a true learning experience for the 200 engineers, researchers, and practitioners who have been part of this mission. And what is the kind of data that you plan to collect? So we're going to be uh, the first weather, weather satellite of Mars, therefore capturing and characterizing the weather system of Mars throughout an entire year. Uh, different from other missions who have covered it during different times of the day, we're going to comprehensively cover all times of the day across all of Mars. And that will allow us to also understand what, roles, what role Mars' weather system plays in atmospheric loss. So say if there's a dust storm on Mars, and dust storms on Mars usually cover the entire planet, uh, how much impact does, do those dust storms have on loss of hydrogen and oxygen, and therefore uh, loss of the atmosphere? These are some of the studies that we're looking into investigating with this mission. And crucially, though, you won't be landing on Mars itself, which uh, NASA are sending up uh, their rover called Perseverance right now. That, that's actually going onto the planet's surface. Why aren't you doing that? So our science requires us to map the whole planet's weather system, and it's best to do that uh, while you're in orbit around Mars. And we do fly a quite a unique orbit uh, around the planet. It's a highly elliptical one. At our closest point, we're 20,000 kilometers from the surface of Mars. At the furthest point, we're 43,000 kilometers from Mars. Usually, your science questions and objectives drive these missions. If you would like to comprehensively cover the planet, then orbiting is the way to do that. If you want to, to study uh, a particular area of interest than using a rover or a lander is the way to go. And crucially, you will be making all the data that you collect publicly available to anyone who wants to see it from September this year. Absolutely. Uh, this data needs to be available to all scientists around the world. Our science team doesn't get a hold of this data prior to any scientists working on any other uh, tangential area of research. And this has been fundamental and foundational uh, in our design of this mission. Now, one of your objectives with this mission also was to get more students in the UAE more interested in the STEM subjects, science and maths and so forth. Have you succeeded in that? Absolutely. Just today, as we are speaking right now, all schools within the Emirates, both private and public schools, are taking a lesson on Mars. We are seeing more and more students excited 
Today morning, my daughter pulled up a space book and explained to me how we can send humans to space and, and how rockets are built. So this is infiltrating every single household. Everyone is very excited about this. And it's given us a common understanding on the importance of science, not only from the perspective of everybody needing to study science, we, um, diversity is always important in terms of fields, but from the perspective of um, ensuring that there is an understanding of science and an appreciation of the role that it plays in society. Now, assuming you're successful with this mission, what would the next objectives be for the Emirates Space Programme? The Space Programme has always been about diversifying the economy and establishing sectors, uh, especially industries that are deeply rooted in technology. Our next step is to take a lot of this knowledge that has been acquired over an experience that has been acquired over the course of the last 15 years and start spinning out companies uh, that are able to tap into the private sector of space, especially with a lower access to, um, to space. And what would you say to people who might say, well, hang on, there's an awful lot of problems down here on planet Earth right now. Most of the planet's in the grip of a horrible uh, pandemic. Shouldn't we be focusing resources on sorting that out before we start looking at uh, exploring other planets? So there's multiple ways of us driving science forward. Um, and as we've learned uh, from the pandemic, um, ensuring that you have a solid base for science in every single area, even not at a time of crises, allows you to help for utilizing science at the time of crises. Any science base amongst any nation needs to be diverse in nature. You need to enter into various fields because the beauty of scientific discovery is you don't know where you're going to use it until it's utilized. And if we continue thinking down the line of we still have problems on Earth, then we wouldn't have, for example, MRI machines, which were driven by the space industry and by the space sector and by exploration of outer space. And that today is a vital part of diagnosis uh, for, for all of humanity within hospitals. Uh, science does not have an application. Science is about discovery and exploration. Um, and after that is when the application comes, once we have an understanding of, of the unknown that we're trying to discover. OK, and uh, just to reiterate, uh, Sarah, th there is still a lot that could go wrong at this late stage, isn't there? Yes. This is, if I take the last six years of, de of development all the way up to launch and all the way through cruise, all the challenges that, has, or that, that, has, or that we've encountered throughout the last uh, six years equals to the 27 minutes that we're going to uh, witness today to enter into orbit around Mars. We completely understand these challenges. We've designed these missions to circumvent these challenges. I think everyone is aware today, especially in the Emirates, on um, what it means to get towards Mars and what we can possibly face. And there's various scenarios uh, that we, we might face uh, getting into orbit around Mars. Well, very, very uh, nerve-wracking time for you. Do appreciate you joining me this morning. Best of luck with it all.